Hi, this is the Age of Asparagus here to show you how to get started with Krita. I'll be using Krita 2.9.2 with an Intuos 5 tablet on Linux Mint. However, this stuff should be useful for any Krita noob, regardless of your setup. The purpose of this video is just to show you the bare minimum you need to start painting, drawing, sketching, or doodling with Krita and a Wacom tablet. I won't be explaining much here, as the purpose is just to get you drawing. However, I will be going into a lot of Krita's features in more detail in future videos. First step, you need to make sure that you plugged in your tablet before you started Krita. If you open Krita first and then plug in your tablet, Krita will not recognize the features of your pen, such as pressure sensitivity. So if you haven't plugged in your tablet yet, close Krita, plug it in, and then start Krita again. Okay, let's close the splash screen. To start, we need a canvas to draw on. So go to the file menu and hit new. For now, the default settings should be fine. Just make that sure that your defaults are the same as mine, especially that you're choosing a custom document and that you have two layers. Hit create to create your canvas. So you're ready to draw. Almost. If you're like me and have more than one monitor, then your drawing is going to be distorted. I have two monitors and the tablet's going to stretch everything I draw. For example, if I try to draw a circle, it's going to get stretched out into an oval. To fix this, we need to map the tablet to a single monitor. To do that, hit the super key or windows key and then type tablet. Or you can also type Wacom. Now, hit the Map to Monitor button and choose Map to Single Monitor. Then, choose the monitor you want to use Krita on. If you hit the wrong monitor, your cursor will jump over there. And for now, you'll have to use your mouse to get back and choose the correct monitor. Also, turn on the Keep Aspect Ratio toggle. Okay. Now, when we draw a circle, it should at least be somewhat round. One other thing, if you're left-handed like I am, you might want to flip your tablet around so that your express keys are on the right instead of the left. Most likely, you have a hand-type thingy here holding the pen, and when your hand is resting on the tablet, it's going to be bumping up against these express keys and causing all sorts of problems. To fix that, we can change the tablet to a left-handed orientation in the tablet settings. So you can rotate your tablet 180 degrees, somewhat like this, and if you have a Wacom Intuos 5 tablet, it has a nice little slot on the USB cord where you can reroute the cord in that direction, and now our hand will not bump up against the express keys. However, now your cursor is probably going in the wrong direction. So let's fix that by opening up the tablet settings again. And now, if you can get your pen moving in the right direction until you can hit this left-handed orientation toggle, and now your pen should be back to normal. Now you're ready to draw. So here's some basics you'll need, including changing colors, changing brushes, erasing, zooming, panning, and saving. There are many ways to do each of these things, and for now I'm only going to show you a couple ways to do each. First, changing colors. To change the colors, you should have a color selector docker, by default, open at the top right. Here, you can select a hue by clicking around the outside ring. You can also select the saturation of the color by moving in and out along the triangle this way. You can choose the brightness of the color by moving along the triangle in this direction. Some beginners pick a color like green and then are slightly confused that they're still drawing in black. That's, that's because they need to change the saturation and brightness using the triangle here. This little round circle here it will be the actual color and you can see to my left there that the preview of the actual color. So even though my hue is green, based on the saturation and the brightness, you have many different options. There we go. Another faster way of changing colors is using your pen button. For me, the top button on my pen pops up the color selector. 
This top button for me is by default set to mimic a right mouse click. By hitting the top button on your pen, you can pull up the color selector and you can choose a hue and brightness and saturation to get the color of your choice. You probably noticed that the color picker that popped up by hitting the pen button also had some brushes on it. You can customize these so they have your favorite brushes at the ready. For now, you can try selecting one of them. Or you can hit the brush presets docker, which is by default at the bottom right beside the layers tab, for a much larger selection of brushes. Changing brush size. To change your brush size, you can use the brush size slider at the top. Or you can use the square brackets on your keyboard. They look like this. The left square bracket will decrease your brush size and the right square bracket will increase your brush size as you can see here. So hold shift on your keyboard click the canvas and drag to the left to reduce your brush size. Or by holding shift, clicking and dragging to the right, you can increase your brush size. Erasing. To erase, you can either just use the eraser on your pen by flipping the pen around. Note that Krita will remember the size of your eraser if you do this. So if I increase my eraser size to 100, it will remember that. And if I switch back to my pen, it will go back to the size I had it at last. Or you can just hit the E key on the keyboard and it will turn your current brush, this ovally shaped brush I have now, into eraser mode. To get my brush back again into normal mode, I just hit E again to toggle it and I can draw once again. Zooming. You can use the plus and minus key on your keyboard to zoom in and out. So the minus key will zoom out and the plus key will zoom back in. You can use either the plus and minus key at the top of your keyboard or at the far right panning. To move about the canvas, the bottom pen button is set by default to grab the canvas and move around. This is the same as hitting a middle mouse button or scroll wheel. It's very helpful if you're zoomed in drawing details and want to pan around the canvas. You can also just hold the space bar and then click and drag. Problems. As you tinker with Krita, you may find yourself in a situation where you can no longer draw. The two main causes of this among my students are, first, that they are drawing in white on a white background. Make sure you check your color circle on the color selector so that you have a saturation and brightness that doesn't give you white. Second, they might have switched to a non-drawing tool. To get back to the brush tool, click the little brush icon on the toolbar, or you can just hit B on the keyboard. Finally, saving. To save your project, just go File, Save, or Save As. Choose your directory, name your file, and hit save. Note that this file will have a .kra extension. This is the file you'll want to open if you want to continue working on your drawing later. When your work is done, 
or when you want to show someone your progress, send it by email or post it, you will need to export your drawing to a regular image format such as a PNG, PNG or a JPG, JPEG. To do this, you go to File, Export. Here, you can change the file type by hitting this drop down menu here and choosing PNG or JPEG. Or, you don't actually have to worry about changing this, you can just end your file name in .png and critical no to export it to this file format. And these default settings should be fine for you. That's it. I hope I provided you with enough to get started drawing with Krita.